very much. And uh, uh, because uh, several points which are germane to the uh, French position have already been made, uh, notably in the French-German context, that will allow me uh, not to cover them again, but that doesn't mean that uh, I don't share them. Uh, first point, which is a prefatory point, and that is uh, the war is only 89 days old. And that's another way of saying that before one is tempted to pass definitive judgments of the sort that one finds in spades in the Twittosphere, uh, you have to project yourself a year or two ahead of in time and to uh, uh, be quite diffident, quite careful. Uh, and this applies not only to the analytical community, but well, the analytical community is, is free and should be free to say about it once, but even more so in the official community, because if you spend your days as some of our, polit our official friends in some of the EU countries, they seem to be spending more of their time uh, critiquing Germany uh, and France uh, than in trying to find uh, ways uh, to work together more positively. Uh, it, 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 it is a facile sport, uh, notably vis-a-vis -vis Germany for the reasons which are indicated, but it's a particularly sterile and to some extent a dangerous sport uh, because this war is going to go on and we need unity badly. That's my prefatory point. Uh, first uh, element, and that is the general French uh, position vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, to put it in a nutshell, uh, to understand what is driving Macron and in informing his policy, uh, the press conference and the, and the uh, presentations which preceded it in Moscow on the 7th of February of this year. Uh, I have actually seen and heard no tougher presentation of the NATO position and the EU position combined than we heard from Macron uh, that particular night. A, uh, a, and indeed, a, a, nobody that I know of found any fault with anything that he said. And that, of course, was also a tipping point in the march to war. It became clear, at least to me, that war had become inevitable because the positions stated by Macron, which are our positions, uh, were totally incompatible with the positions which Putin recalled and reaffirmed that same night. Uh, weapons, operation of weapons. The French have been providing a lot of hardware to Ukraine since 2014. Uh, I did not make a mistake. I didn't say since February 24th, 2022. I said since 2014. Uh, there has been relatively little communication on this, the, but the, the, the amounts are, were not inconsiderable. They did not do, to my knowledge at least, a surge provision of weaponry of the sort which Britain and, and the US did spectacularly and spectacularly well, I would add, uh, in February, March, uh, and subsequently uh, of this year. It wasn't the same approach. Uh, the French, for OPSEC reasons to one extent, uh, for reasons at the time of not making a, what was then still a prospective negotiation more difficult, uh, Minsk, apparent, uh, the corpse of Minsk was not yet entirely dead at the time. Uh, 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 and indeed, uh, the, the, the most public information we had on the provision of weapons by the French were provided by the Russian general staff when they complained about uh, the French anti-tank, the Milan uh, missiles, in the famous uh, presentation uh, by Gerasimov and company at the end of phase one and on the eve of the beginning of phase two. They complained as they did about the uh, Swedish, British, uh, uh, German and other uh, anti-tank weapons. Uh, the French government has started communicating only over the last couple of weeks, notably on the provision of the very long range artillery. The crews have been trained. My understanding is that the artillery has been delivered but I don't actually know that. 
uh, operational security is, is part of the picture. And thanks to the Swedish warhead of uh, that particular brand of long-range artillery, uh, this will actually make uh, an appreciated difference on the battlefield. And the Ukrainians have been quite impatient uh, to use uh, this kit. Uh, second point on uh, the, the new strategic dispensation. Uh, the word strategic autonomy are hardly mentioned these days. That will not have escaped you. Part of that, of course, is that you know, it's first things first. Uh, let's, uh, let's get on with this war. Uh, let's get on with this whole affair. And we can always discuss, uh, uh, some would say theology, others would say strategy uh, at a later stage. But more, more substantially, uh, what have we discovered or rediscovered? First of all, we have rediscovered that to deter a nuclear superpower, and this is a conflict, this is a war with a nuclear dimension. Uh, well, you have NATO, you have the US, and you have Britain, and you have France. Uh, and there, the EU is not part of that picture. The second thing, of course, is that the picture of the war is much wider than that. And that you can't get a number of things done, notably, in the field of tech transfer, and I mentioned specifically tech transfer, not simply sanctions in general, you have to have, of course, full use of the EU, full use of the G7, and so on. So we have this extraordinary case of what used to be called the complementarity between organizations, between NATO and the EU in particular. But this is, not, this is more than complementarity. This is actually, in a way, intrication. And here also, like was the case a few minutes ago, uh, I would emphasize the professionalism of uh, American diplomacy in this period. This was really, uh, it, was a, it is something we had not been used to, well, let's say, close to a quarter of a century. It came as a very welcome surprise. And I hope that this actually is a, uh, is a new normal. Last point, very quickly, a enlargement, the EU, uh, which was mentioned earlier on uh, today. Uh, the French have been against every single enlargement to a large country since the beginning of the EU. So there's nothing personal about, uh, about this. The Brits certainly got the treatment for about 10 years, and unfortunately we failed. I think the Brits will agree with me that it was not a good idea uh, to have been ad admitted. We were too weak in need. Uh, Spain, God, it was difficult for the Spanish. Uh, talking about farm subsidies, woo. Uh, uh, Poland, Turkey. Uh, this is the norm for the French. And here I would, emphasize a small point. This is a fairly broad spectrum attitude. It does not apply to the smaller countries, I would add. If you draw the list of the smaller countries, in most cases, the French were in favor. Uh, uh, it has little or nothing to do uh, with uh, pro-Russianism or putin uh although the putin Verstehen are naturally against enlargement, that's true. It is a much broader constituency than the Putin first year. And if I were a Ukrainian diplomat, which I am not, uh, maybe I should, it would be, uh, be a great job these days. Uh, 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 I would urge them to be very careful in not confusing uh, 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 the fight that they need to wage for enlargement, and I'm in favor, uh, and the fight that they have to wage against the Putin first year. It's not the same, uh, 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 not the same approaches, not the same arguments. Voilà. Well. <clears throat>